So last time we had a rather rambling discussion <laughs> on what is a field, but I don't think we've actually covered all the ground, right? Yeah, we're not done. We're not done. So we, we spoke effectively really about electricity and magnetism, yeah. which are the two of the key fields. I mean, that's where these fields sort of started off, yeah. but we find that there are there are other fields sort of to describe different physical things, right? So, yeah. so we have, um, they have slightly different properties to them. So we, can, we should run through that. So we mentioned that the electric field, and the magnetic field are vector fields. And yeah. that means that they fill all of space and every point has a magnitude, the strength of the field and a direction. Which direction does that yeah. field point in? So I think of this like um, the wind. So at each point, you can ask which way is the wind blowing and in, there's a direction. So you need two numbers to specify a direction and how strong is the wind. It gives you all the information you need to know. And it's this strong here and it's do, that strong Do you here. need three numbers? Uh, I said two for direction and then an oh. extra one for... I think we'll go back to the replay and see if I... Two for direction and then one for magnitude. <laughs> yeah, it's a vector field. It's you need a, three numbers. It's a yeah, 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 yeah. Two for direction. You need a point on the sphere. Okay, and then, and then okay, the length okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, good. I'm just going to put a little chalkboard. And just, <laughs> yeah. uh, excellent. Okay, so I, I always think of it as, as just three numbers. Cause I, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, anyway, doesn't matter. Doesn't matter because there's different ways of representing that number at a point, right? And yes. Which is where we run into the fun things of. Uh, of doing things in coordinate systems, coordinate transformation, which really hurts people's heads. Yep. But they, they, there are other kinds of fields. So the simplest, of course, is this notion of a scalar field. So you yep. spoke about the wind, yep. and that has a direction. Now, scalar field is one down, and that's just a value at every single point. Yep. And you could take something like the temperature in this yeah. room as being a scalar field. Yep. Every single point has a temperature associated with it, yep. and uh, that's just a number. Mm -hmm. Now, of course. When we get down to some very small scales and we know that temperature is related to the speeds of individual molecules, yeah. then asking what the temperature is at a particular point really doesn't mean anything. Yeah. But that's something else. Yeah. So that's going down and talking about scalar fields. What if we move upwards? So we have these things called tensor fields. Oh, and these are the things that scare the undergrads. Yeah. So basically you're attaching just more numbers to each point. So, but, uh, so one way of thinking about this would be, so, so one particularly useful one's called the energy momentum tensor. And a sort of hand wavy way of thinking about that maybe is, is um, at each point, it's telling you which way, uh, you know, what momentum is doing at that point. So it's not just saying that the particle's going this way, but, but, but if I, how much, how much say momentum in this direction is, is passing through this way. I'm not explaining this very well, am I? No. So there's sort but of carry a, on. Yeah, <laughs> let me just get deeper into this hole. Um, so there's there's it, it it accounts for things like shear. So I can have it be the case that okay, the particles moving this way, uh, but just below it, the particles aren't quite moving as fast. And so in that way, the the particles are moving in a certain way, but there's something else about this direction which we need to take account of in that in that 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 there's a difference between the, the, the way these particles and the way just the ones just underneath them are moving. And when we start to get that all together, all sort of stresses and strains, say, in a material or in, you know, just in any form of energy moving around, we find that to really nail that down at a point, we actually need nine numbers. So we need you know, three times three. So um, for each direction, how, how the way in which the momentum is moving in that direction, so to speak. Um, Again, it's a pretty. It, it is a bit of a tricky. This is why the undergrads get scared, and so do, so certain other people. Um, so that then you have a tensor field, and perhaps the most famous tensor field of them all is what Einstein did to gravity. So in Newton's in Newton's idea of, of gravity, you don't even really need the field at all. You could talk about a gravitational field, but you don't have gravitational waves or anything like that. You don't have to account for the fact that this moves and then this moves a bit later. They can just, they move together. Um, in Einstein's theory, uh, gravity is just the warping of space and time themselves. And so this curvature of space and time, if you really want to completely specify what's going on there, you need information at each point in space and time about the way things are curving in different uh, di directions and dimensions and all that sort of stuff. So you end up attaching to each point a sort of 
a, a bit more of a um, it's called the, the 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 Riemann tensor. So it has there's certain symmetries there, but it's because there's space and time. There's four, and so you, you need a four by four tensor, sixteen numbers. Yeah. Except that some of them are the same. So there's actually only ten that you need at a yeah. particular point. Uh, yeah, but we mentioned relatives here, but we have to remember um, normally when we talk about fields, yeah. we talk about uh, what the value is, you know, how many numbers you might need at a particular point in space and time. Yeah. With relativity, that field is space and time. Yeah. And so you, you, you're now sort of talking about uh, a field which is itself, right? Yes. Because it, it, I mean, normally fields, uh, like in, in classical physics, uh, the stage is space and time and yeah. the field is in space and time. Yeah. In relativity, the field is space and time itself and so so it's the warping of the geometry that you're trying to yeah yeah so, so it's, it's somewhat somewhat more complicated let's not worry about that let's 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 talk about other kinds of fields so right another way that people um might be familiar with but maybe they don't even know it's 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 a, a wave a field i meant a not field. a wave yeah. it is is the wave function of quantum mechanics yeah. and it it may not seem like a field because when you talk about quantum mechanics uh, first of all, when we deal with the simple cases where we talk about like a particle in a box mm. and we draw this wave function, right, which describes that particle, what we're doing, of course, is we're saying that that particle actually has a value at all values of space, which is given by the wave function. Mm. And when we take the, the square of the wave function, the modulus squared, yeah. that gives us the probability of finding the particle at those particular yeah. points. And then when we go to three dimensions we then have a wave function that fills all of space. Yeah. And the, the modulus squared of that wave function gives you the probability of finding the particle. And, of course, we take this to the next level when we deal with something called quantum field theory. Yeah. And what quantum field theory tells you is that you still have a field that fills all of space, and that field can vibrate. That's mm -hmm. what the wave function is. But those vibrations are quantized you can't put any old vibration into the quantum field you have your particular values and you have this entire edifice of modern physics called quantum field theory yeah. which is rather confusing actually so <laughs> it, it, it's a it's a tricky one the thing about quantum mechanics is um so you have this function and you put in you put in a position and a time and it, what it tells you is roughly what's the probability that if I observe the position of the particle, it would be at that particular position in time? Well, uh, except that, as you were saying, it's, it's, a, it's a complex field. Yes, yes. That, uh, things get a bit tricky. Yes, yes. This is, this is again, one of these issues. Um, if, you get some, if you get some quantum physicists down the pub, ask them about, you know, is, is the wave function yeah, right. real yeah. right because it's it, to calculate with it it's, it's a complex quantity it has a real and imaginary part so every point in space mm -hmm. has a real and imaginary part but to calculate your observables you t always take the modular square that gets rid of the complex nature of the field so why can't we just get rid of the complex nature entirely if if i have a a, a uh, one particle and i say okay there's a bit of probability over here a bit of probability over there and then as I go in time, these two sort of approach each other. You might think, oh, well, I mean, there's just two different ways for the particle to get here. And so those two probability ways would just add up because they're, you know, ordinary positive numbers and all that sort of stuff. Um, but if you have a complex field, when you add those together, they can interfere with each other. So they act like a wave, even though what they're representing is a particle in the sense that whenever I, whenever it hits a screen, it hits the screen at a specific point, And that's what I mean by our particle. Um, suddenly, uh, the particle, you know, there's a bit of its wave function over here and a bit of its wave function over here. And over time, those, if those two, you know, end up in the same place, they actually interfere with each other. And so... Uh, whether the particle is in a specific point depends on whether they add up or whether they cancel each other out. So, you get this is the sort of underlying mathematics behind the two the, the two slit experiment that I send a particle that could go this way, could go that way, and so you think, oh, there's two ways for it to arrive at the screen, so maybe it's twice as likely to arrive there. But actually, no, this way and that way sort of cancelled out in each other, and now, um, now who knows what's going on? Yeah. Um, so, so, so the, the complex nature. Yes. of the 
um, of the wave function is the thing that gives you all the fun parts of quantum mechanics. Yeah. All the interferency bits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right? So, um, now, I remember that we, the, one of the reasons we decided to talk about what is a field, because somebody asked us, what is the inflaton? What is the inflaton? Okay. Field? Yeah. Right. So, so, let's take a step back and let's try and deal with that. So, firstly, um, what is the inflaton? Where, 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 where is it needed? What, what do we mean when we talk about an inflaton? Okay, so we're in cosmology and uh, we're thinking about a few different problems in cosmology. Uh, these are called, we've discussed these earlier, the flatness problem, the horizon problem. There's a couple of things about the, the standard model of cosmology that just make us a bit uneasy. And inflation is the idea that if in the earliest stages of the universe, the very earliest moments the first point oh 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 one um you know seconds after you know whatever um if there was a period of very rapid expansion that would explain a lot about the universe we see around us all right interesting how are we going to make that happen and the inflaton is basically all right the name we give to whatever form of energy made the universe expand really fast in its earliest stages. Okay. And that's what we mean by that. Now, it would be great if the inflaton turned out to be something we already knew about or already thought existed. So maybe like the Higgs field, but that doesn't seem to be working. Um, but in general, whether it is or is not, and basically most of those ideas haven't worked, it's, it's, it's whatever form of energy we've had to assume is out there somewhere, somehow, in some form, which in the very early universe accounts for this uh, accelerating expansion. So, so the inflaton is a field and it just has a value at every particular point. It's just a, just a scalar field, right? In its simplest form. Yeah. In its simplest form. You can, you can always jazz up all these yeah. theories and, and talk about um, higher order fields. But in the simplest form, it's, it just means that there is an energy associated mm -hmm. with every point in space and that energy has a particular relationship in the sense that um, there's a relationship between the energy density and the pressure of yeah. this field which means that it causes acceleration yeah so universe was born we don't know how that happened and at some point this inflaton mm -hmm. came into existence right? this energy appeared from some other process in the very, very early universe that we do not understand, yep. basically imbued space with this inflaton field, mm -hmm. that drove inflation. So the universe started to expand. Now, one of the things is that uh, when we talk about the inflaton, people often draw a picture. I'm going to draw a picture. Go for it. Okay, I'm going to see if we can do this. Yeah. And we have a picture that looks something like this. And we have like this. And this is... Uh, the potential, potential of the inflaton as a function of the value of the field phi yeah. is the, usually the thing that's and against phi, right? And I think this this goes up again, doesn't it? Something like that. So so what does this mean? So the the question we need to know about a field is if I just l left it to itself, what would it do? Um, and so here's the sort of value of the field. And so for an electric field, this would be, you know, how strong is the electric field? Um, and so the question is, when the field has a certain strength, what happens next? And a good way to, to represent this is, um, imagine that the field is sort of like a ball rolling on a certain hill. And the shape of the hill then tells you what the field will do next. So I've got here, here I've got a field value here. I, I go up here and I say, all right, what if the field was here? And I find things are pretty flat. If I put a ball there, it would just about stay there. Now, in most of these models, actually, that's a very, very slight slope that way. So uh, I've driven it, I've drawn it as a drawn very slope. Okay, <laughs> I, uh, we'll line that one up later. Okay, so there's a very, uh, actually, what would happen is it would very slowly roll to this way, to the, over to this value of the field. And so that's the way that we sort of code what's the physics here? Like yeah. what happens next? And we should point out that when we're talking about a ball rolling, there's actually an equ equation yeah, that, yeah, that, yeah. that tells us how the field evolves based upon the slope of the field. So yeah. we're talking about a ball rolling, but really there's an equation that says that it will move yeah. in this direction. This is what will happen to the field strength. It's just so similar to a ball rolling on a hill that we just like to talk about it that way because yeah. it's a nice image. Um, what we've discovered is when, when we sort of work out, okay, remember, we, we know what we want. We want this thing to make the expansion of the universe accelerate and then, and then interesting stuff happens. Um, 
how can I make how can I write down the physics of a field which basically means just drawing this shape here so that that thing happens so that the accelerating expansion happens and the, the short answer is you need something that is um, on a on a very flat almost perfectly flat uh, slope here you need a slow rolling field as it's called um, but you can't have that happen all the time because then inflation would just happen all the time and this wouldn't happen. The universe isn't inflating now. So something different has to happen. So at some point, you've got to be slowly rolling. So we, so we start over here somehow. Um, I had lectures from Neil Turok, who's a famous cosmologist, and he would like, like he would draw like the hand of God just sort of putting the, the yeah. ball. Just to say that that, that that bit of the story is not part of the model. I mean, he was cr quite critical, but never mind. Um, the ball starts here. It's rolling slowly. And then, and then inflation ends as it rolls off and then other things happen. You, you, you better reheat the universe down here and, and all sorts of other stuff. So in terms of what is a field, um, you know, it, if we just assume for the moment it's part of the furniture of the universe, right? It's something that's out there. Uh, in this case, a field is just a form of energy that's out there. What, for, what sort of energy? And when you ask a physicist that, all he wants is just, all, all that he or she wants is just the equation that describes how the thing works. Uh, and, and we specify that with this shape, with right. the, the potential. And so, so what we're saying is that the infoton, right, is really just an energy density, comes from somewhere, hand of God. Some people say, well, maybe something to do when gravity separated from the other forces. Maybe sure. that, that magically put energy into the universe. It had a particular form. It mm -hmm. drove accelerated expansion for a bit till it rolled off this hill that energy then disappears from space yeah. and inflation stops and through mumble mumble magic that energy <laughs> so, sort of gets uh released back into the universe back yeah. as particles and radiation yeah. that's the stuff that we're made of today so the, you know the energy that we have in us is somehow the remnants of the infoton that existed in the very early universe so that's the story of the infoton field. Um, the reason why it seems so abstract is because, you know, when you come down to specifying, a, you know, these are f physical things, basic fundamental physical things, you don't need a lot of information to specify what they are. So when people say, what is an electron? Well, you know, here's the equation it, it, it's governed by. It's the thing that turns up when you turn on your CRT, yeah. old school TV. Other than that, physicists, it's not like we can take a picture of it to show you in any sort of detail. So like, you know, in this case, the infoton field, once you've specified that, that's pretty much all that physics can tell you. Any, any more informa information you added to that would just be unnecessary to the theory. And so we, we don't bother, you know, what yeah. color is its hair and <laughs> what clothes does it wear? We don't need any of that information. So that's, it, for modern physics, what is a field really just means, um, you know, in, in our fundamental quantum field theory description of what energy takes the form of, a field is just a specific way of specifying a certain type of energy in the universe and what it does and how it behaves. And, and that's what physics is trying to do. And I, th I think we should probably wrap up there, but um, you could put a link in whichever direction somewhere, somewhere. Uh, how about you put a link to uh that uh, uh really nice discussion uh richard Feynman has with an interviewer about what is what is a magnet how does a magnet oh, work yeah. right yeah, yeah that's a good one yeah because in the end you'll get to the you know in the end a physicist will just say these are the equations this is what it does yeah i can't tell you anymore <laughs>